What's going on guys, PXCam20 back in with a brand new video. We are here at WeatherTech Laguna Seca, but unfortunately this is going to look a little bit different from my other videos just because I'm an idiot and I forgot to record the race when it was actually happening. So this is going to look a little bit different. It's going to be off of the replay and I just didn't want to catch you guys off guard with how the uh, video actually looked like. So we're just going to jump right into it. Hope you guys enjoy. Now, as we jump into the race, we are starting in fifth place as uh, I decided to choose the Renault Megane for this race. So, this was a daily race C, so fuel and tire wear were uh, a factor here on this race. And uh, Polyphony decided to give us the medium compound tires only, which uh, could last the entirety of the race. I know some people were doing like a one stop, but it actually was slower than just doing a non stop and uh, she's abusing these tires, using them all the way to the end and trying to build a gap from everybody else just because if you come into the pits here at WeatherTech Laguna Seca, it is one of the longest pit roads in the entire game. I don't know why it's like that on this game, but you can easily find yourself about 30, 35 seconds in the pit. So uh, yeah, so that's why people decided to just not come into the pits, do a no stop. And that was gonna be our game plan here as we are in one of the best cars when it comes to tire wear, which is the Megane. And uh, one of the worst cars that you can actually pick around this track was some of the front wheel drive cars. But the only thing is the front wheel drive cars were ridiculously fast on this race. So if you're using like the Audi TT, the uh, the Peugeot, or even the Volkswagen Sirocco, then um, you can easily pull away from everybody and run some really, really quick times. But again, the trade-off was going to be that you were going to wear out your tires and by lap 10 or 11, you were losing about one or two seconds from the uh, other cars that were able to save their tires. So uh, we're going to see what we can do here as the game plan, since uh, the only Audi TT that was actually ahead of us was in second place and the uh, first place car was actually a Nissan GTR, which is quite an interesting uh, pick. But uh, we're just going to try to see if we can stay within three to four seconds of the uh, first place driver. And if we can do that, then we have a really great chance of winning this race. But jumping to lap number three, you can see that nothing has really changed, but we have built a little gap from us and some of the cars behind. But uh, the Colombian right ahead of us made a little mistake. And you can see third and up, we're able to kind of pull away as we're taking a little peek on the inside of the Colombian, but just a little too optimistic. But into the left-hander, he just uh, goes a little bit wide, clips the dirt, and that could be very dangerous, especially into some of these corners with dirty tires. Uh, the track limits here are very, very uh, touchy, and uh, you don't want to accidentally clip your tires in some of these dirt because they could just pull you out into the sand realm, and uh, you find yourself running into either the barrier or spinning out. So uh, you definitely don't want to get any of those tires into those into the sand because all that's gonna do is just send you off and uh, end your race faster than you can say end your race cheeky joke anyways <laughs> um, going into the final corner uh, you can see that second place uh, the Audi TT has a two second penalty and that's gonna be beneficial towards us because once we hit the penalty zone we should be close enough to easily take advantage of that get around him and we will take that free position as we now pass the penalty zone you see, there you go. We were able to get around him nice and easy, no trouble, and we are now up into fourth place without really having to do anything besides just riding right behind the Colombian. So, uh, yeah, so things are just working out into our favor here. First place is still not that far away from us. He's, uh, I believe, at this point was only two seconds away, and on the replay, it doesn't show the separation of the car, so I apologize about that, but. Uh, we are still, you can, you know, he's still in our sight, so he hasn't pulled away too much. And uh, the Colombian has been, you know, running consistent lap times where we haven't really lost pace with the top two guys. And uh, the only way I'm going to ruin this race is if I ruin it myself. You can see we make a little bit of contact with him on the final corner and uh, got very lucky that penalty was on our side as that could have easily been a one or two second penalty and we'd have been or suffering the safe mate as the uh, Audi TT a couple of laps prior. So on to lap number six, we're halfway through the race and at this point I'm just kind of keeping an eye on my tire wear 
as uh, we did use the brake balance to the rear to kind of save our uh, tires in the front as those were going to be the tires that were going to wear out uh, faster than the uh, rears. But as we head into this left hand, you can see that the Colombian accidentally makes contact with the American and uh, that actually upset his car as we were able to now get around the Colombian, capitalize on that mistake as we jump into the replay, you can see. Just makes a little bit of contact with Thunder Nux and uh, just ruined his momentum off of the exit. We were able to just get onto the inside, cover our spot, and we are now promoted into fourth place as we set our sights now on Thunder Nux and uh, see if we can capitalize on any mistakes that he makes. But into the corkscrew here, we kind of go a little defensive so that we make sure that the Columbia doesn't try to do anything funny here and try to make a, a cheeky little overtake on the inside. And uh, luckily for us, everything worked out fine. But on lot number seven here, the Audi TT was starting to show its muscles as it was able to easily get us down the straight as uh, the horsepower on the Audi TT was a lot stronger than our McGann and he just easily makes the overtake on the outside into turn number one and we have to relinquish the spot and follow him into this fourth place position so we gained the position but then we lost position still not the end of the world because I do know that the Audi TT up ahead is gonna have to uh, run slower lap times in about a couple laps here or a few laps here because uh, his tires are going to start wearing out tremendously as we start coming towards the end of the race so uh, we're just following along here we're going to see if we can try to keep up with him as you can see first is now starting to build a little gap away from us and uh, this is actually not what we needed here because I don't know what the uh, tire wear situation is for that GTR because uh, I've never really seen anybody use the GTR on this race but uh, it seems like it does pretty well here. It's actually pretty fast, but again, going back to the tire wear, I, I'm not too familiar with how it's going to fare when it comes down to the final few laps. But as we come out of the right hand, you can see that Audi TT is fighting with Thunder Nux really, really hard, and uh, that allowed us to catch up to them really quick. So we, we had about an eight tenths of a second, about a one second gap away from them. And it's been on two corners just because of how hard they were fighting. We were able to just make up the time. And now we are underneath Thunder Nux as we head into turn number one. Break as late as we can. Thunder Nux makes a little bit of contact with Kevin in the Audi TT. And that actually pushes him back. And we're able to make the overtake on him as we are re-promoted back into the podium. So things are looking in our favor here as we uh, jump into the replay to see exactly what happened. Thunder Nux just on the outside, just misjudged his braking, I think, and uh, ran to the back of Kevin. And we just decided to say, okay, we're taking advantage of that. Go right ahead of uh, Thunder Nux, hold our position, and uh, Thunder Nux accidentally uh, clips a sausage curb, upsets his car, and we're able to get that third place away from him now as uh, we set our sights once again on Kevin and the leader up in the uh, Nissan GTR. So. Uh, things looking really, really good on our end here. As long as we can keep it on the track, run some consistent laps, we should be able to at least finish with the podium. But uh, you, you already know these races can turn in an instant. And uh, you can see right here, our tire wear are really, really bad as uh, we've lost about 25% of our grip on the fronts and on the rear. So uh, luckily they are starting to fade evenly, but at the same time, uh, we're, we lost a lot of grip, so um, it's a little bit more difficult to handle this car. And what I'm starting to think about is what is going on with this GTR up ahead and this Audi TT up ahead. Because again, the Audi TT is going to lose a lot of its front uh, tires just because it's uh, front wheel drive. And not only that, you know, you just get the wheel spin, use up a little bit more uh, tire wear uh, compared to the other cars. So. Uh, he is going to start struggling on some of those corners as you guys already see on the uh, left-hander previous he actually got a little bit loose on the exit and uh, we were able to catch up to him easily off of the corkscrew and uh, now we were able to close down this gap to him so uh, again just playing the long game here just having to be very very patient and it's it's a really hard thing to do because you just want to do a lot of racing you want to push the car as much as you can but uh, when you're doing this race especially when you're in the McGann you just have to think to yourself like you're not the fastest car on the track. The, the McGann is definitely very, very slow, especially on the straight, uh, because you can see right here, second place was able to just easily just pull away from us by about half a second. And uh, again, I just had to be very, very patient and tell myself, okay, I know they were going to pull away from us on the straight, 
but on these corners especially around this time of the race and on the end we're gonna be uh, a lot stronger than them so it's just a waiting game and uh, if we play our cards right we can definitely find ourselves fighting here for the win especially because uh, first place is not too far away and uh, at this point this is when I started noticing that the uh, GTR was definitely starting to fade here with this tire wear so uh, somehow the GTR actually had worse tire wear than the Audi TT which surprised me a lot because uh, the Audi TT of Kevin was all over the back of BM Drifter and you can see that he's just now taking a little peek onto the inside onto the outside and uh, he's doing everything he can to try to get around Drifter because he knows once it hits lap 12 or 13, he's going to be done for and he's not going to have the same amount of grip that he has right now. But uh, as we come into the final sector once again, you can see that Kevin is just riding the butt of Drifter here. As Drifter is going to take a very defensive line onto the inside and that's going to invite us to catch up to them. As you can see, since they were doing all that side by side fighting, we we're able to make up majority of the gap and uh, catch right back up to them onto the final corner and just stay into the slipstream. So this is gonna be beneficial towards us because using that slipstream, it should be able to give us a little uh, better of a top end speed. So we should be able to stay with them a lot easier. And uh, you, you can see that the, the Audi TT uh, kind of looks like guacamole to be honest, but uh, it's uh, still right behind the GTR and now they're not really pulling away from us. So you can see the effects of each lap and uh, how slowly their the car was degrading compared to us uh, especially the tires and uh, you can see now how easy it is for us to keep up with them in the uh, in the slipstream and on some of these corners so they're not pulling away too far from us and uh, we at this point I'm just kind of thinking to myself like you know what we actually have a really great chance to to win this race all we have to do is just time the moves correctly and if we could just pick one of them before this final lap and then try to take the other one on the final lap, then yeah, we could definitely win this race because the GTR is looks like he's struggling with those tires tremendously now. And the I know the Audi TT is, is gonna be struggling with this tire. So onto the final corner, we just couldn't put ourselves into a right situation to uh, go for the overtake on the inside of the Audi TT. But off the exit, we actually did get a pretty good exit. But again, just due to our horsepower being so limited and our top end speed being so bad, the Audi TT was just able to pull away and uh, we're just too far back to go for a move on the inside. But things get a little bit hairy here as the Audi TT makes a little bit of contact with the GTR. We go for the move on the inside but clip the sausage curb and in doing so we accidentally take Kevin out and uh, you can see right here, went to turn number one into turn number two. You see we take the peak on the inside, just clip that sausage curb, lose the back end and we take out Kevin, send him straight into the sand realm. And uh, unfortunate for him, there's just nowhere for me to go. As uh, just, Once I clipped that sausage curb, it was basically over for me. And uh, I tried to save as best I could, but Kevin was just unfortunate to be on the outside. So uh, we accidentally take him out there, but I didn't want to go for the win like that. As you can see, he dropped all the way from second place to eighth. And I actually stopped on the racetrack to try to let him go by but I didn't realize how far back he was so uh, we let two cars go by I was gonna wait before the course cruise to see if I can let everybody else go by just so I can finish right behind Kevin that was my fault I did not want to finish in second place and even go for the win like that so we park it onto the right hand side right before the course crew as you can see I'm just flashing my lights to the left hand side just waiting for Kevin and there you go he was able to get around to CZ in his guacamole car and uh, we are now demoted all the way back into 8th place. So we went from dirty driver to not as dirty of a driver since we did let Kevin ahead of us. But I had to go for that move. It was the final lap. He was struggling a lot for that second corner, especially after he made contact with the GTR. And uh, I just saw the gap on the inside and I uh, went for it. Just unfortunate that I went a little too narrow, touched that sausage curb, and accidentally took him, took him out. But uh, heading down to the line, Kevin slowed down. Not sure if he was just trying to let me go by or if he was just showing his displeasement. But either way, uh, we had to slow down to kind of take evasive action. And uh, we finished this race in eighth place. So uh, once again, we went from being the dirtiest driver on the track to 
I guess not being as dirty of a driver just because we let him go through, but I just wanted to show some sportsmanship and uh, just let him get ahead of me and let him know that, you know, it was an accident. I really didn't mean to take him out, but uh, it's unexcusable for me. And I already know that uh, no matter if it was an accident or not, if you get taken out, it always feels terrible. But uh, yeah, let me know how you guys were enjoying this race. If you guys were doing it last week for uh, Daily Race CS, this was probably one of my favorite races that we had in a while just because it wasn't only the front wheel drive cars that were dominating this race, but uh, it was still a lot of fun. And um, again, a lot of close racing. Just unfortunate that things between me and Kevin had to end like that. But uh, again, let me know what you guys thought about this race and what you guys are thinking so far about what. Uh, Polyphony is doing with all these uh, changes on the BOP. Uh, you can leave that in the comments down below. And uh, if you guys really enjoy the content, which I hope you guys did since you guys made it all the way to the end of the video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe on the video as it really helps out the channel when you guys do so. And again, if you guys really enjoyed the video, I hope to see you guys on the next one. Peace out.